What's up, Geometry? Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Math with Mullins. Today we're going to be looking at Lesson 4.4, Congruence and Transformation. So we're going to be able to identify congruent figures, how can congruence be performed with transformations, and then use some theorems about those congruence transformations. First thing we want to make sure we understand, congruent figures have all the same shape and the same size. They're identical. It's almost like copy-paste, and they're put somewhere else on the coordinate plane. So what we're going to do here is we're going to identify any congruent figures. So identify and congruent figures in the coordinate plane and then explain. And that should say any congruent figures. So my bad on the spell check. Okay. Let's start with um, this down here. Square Q, P, R, and R. So square Q, P, and R is congruent to square A, B, C, D, because they're both four by four. Um, the only thing different is that it was maybe translated two to the left and one, two, three, four, five, six down, okay? Um, so they both have two by two area. Other ones that could be um, equivalent, we can maybe try triangle S, T, U. So triangle S, T, U is congruent to triangle um, H, I, J. H, I, J. They also have a two by two area. And one way they are the same figure is that they look like they might have had a 180 degree rotation done to them. Um, this one, the squares, that was a translation. And then the last two that are obviously congruent, triangle um, L, K, M, and F, E, G. They are just a reflection across the x-axis. Okay, and they have a both have a two by three area. Okay, so those are just different ways that you can determine which ways um, they were shown through their congruency. Congruence transformations, that just means there are multiple transformations and that is still going to be a combination of rigid motions. That means the size and shape are not going to change. So what we're going to do is look to see what congruence transformation could map ABCD to EFGH. So we're starting with ABCD. And one thing I'm thinking of is that you can probably reflect over the y-axis and then maybe reflect over the x-axis again. So let's see what happens first. When we reflect over the y-axis, okay? So D would move 1, 2, 1, 2. Here's D prime. C is four points away, so 1, 2, 3, 4. A is only one point away. And B is 1, 2, 3 points away. So right here. So, so far, there's your y-axis reflection. And then it looks like I can still translate A to here as if I, or sorry, I reflect it over the x-axis, but now I probably need to translate it one unit to the left. So just notice again, if you reflect B down here, it's going to be pushed over. But then again, too, I'm thinking A needs to match with E, B needs to match with F, C needs to match with G, and D needs to match with H. So maybe instead of reflecting over the x-axis, how do I get A to match with E? Well, I can do that by translating down 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, so really, 4 units down for our translation for ABC to be mapped onto EFGH. So one more time, because ABCD is written in that order and EF 
GH is written in that order. A needs to matches up with E, B to F, C to G, D to H. So when I do that, all I need to do is drag it down four units. Okay. Um, I could have done something else. I might have could reflect it over here and then translate it over, and that would work as well. So if you work, if you were to translate like point A down over the x-axis, this is like another option. Reflect x-axis. And then you translate over, you translate down one, two, over two, and then translate two down and two left, that will still get A to be where point E is, down two over two, okay? So let's see if you can try this one. Describe a congruence transformation that maps JKL to MNP. So see what you can do to maybe reflect it, translate it, whatever you want to do. Pause the video here, see what you choose, and then we'll click play to determine what we can do next. Okay, so just like before, we know that JKL I want to match it with M, N, P. So one of the things I might want to do, because I want J to end up being on top of where M is, one thing I could do is just translate JKL all the way over. So J I could translate over one, two, three, four, five units, right? Translate. And then after I translated J five right, I can reflect over the X axis to get to where M is. Okay, so again, you can do that with L, one, two, three, four, five. There would be L prime. And then if I reflect it over the X axis, it's gonna end up where P is. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Here would be K prime reflecting over the X axis. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It would end up where N is. Okay, that is one transformation. Another transformation you maybe could have tried is reflecting over the X axis first and then translate. So you can also switch these around and it would still give you the same thing. Okay. The next thing we're going to talk about is the reflections in parallel lines theorem. And this is really just noticing that your parallel lines become your line of reflection. So if K and M are parallel, then a reflection in line K followed by a reflection in line M is a, the same as a translation. So for instance, if you started here at A, B, you reflected it across line K, it becomes A prime, B prime. But then you reflect it one more time, it becomes A double prime, B double prime. Both of these from A to A double prime just is a translation where you just slide it to the right, okay? So that's all that theorem is stating. Let's go ahead and try this one. So this is on the back of your paper that was given to you in class. And it says, in the diagram, a reflection in line K maps GH to G prime H prime, and the reflection in line M maps G prime H prime to G double prime H double prime. Also, H, B is equal to 9, so from H to line B is equal to 9, and D to H double prime, D to H double prime is equal to 4, okay? Name any segments congruent to each segment, G, H, H, B, and G, A. So let's go ahead and do letter A here. G, H is congruent to g prime h prime and g prime h prime is congruent to g double prime h double prime okay those are all equivalent segments they just been have been reflected over two separate lines now let's look at hb hb which is here that's equal to nine is also equal to b to h prime okay or hb to bh. So you could say congruent to bh prime. So here to here is the same thing as here to here, which means this is now equal to 9. Okay. And then the other one, ga, is the same thing 
as a to g prime because a line of reflection is going to be the same distance it is from one point on to the other side. Okay, so in letter B, does A, C, here's A, here's C, equal B, D? Yes. Okay, the reason why A, C is equal to B, D is because you have perpendicular lines creating 90 degrees, which are equal segments. Okay, that just means they're not leaning anyway. Yes, G prime, H prime is leaning, but in that case, no. So then it's also creating a parallelogram. So you can almost picture like this is a rectangle right here. And AC and BD are parallel from one another, and they're also matching. So now, what is the length of CG? Okay, now CG is, or sorry, G prime to G double prime. So this entire length, okay? What we want to make sure is we understand is we just said AC is equal to BD. So if we can figure out what AC is or BD is, then we can figure out what AC is and then use that same length there. I know that B to H prime is equal to 9, and then h prime to d would be the same thing as d to double h prime, so this would also be 4, okay? Now, when you're looking at that, you're going to think about this theorem that we just talked about, which was right before, and I want you to just look at these two statements here. A to A double prime is perpendicular to K and M because they have those two right angles here, okay? A to A double prime is equal to 2 times the distance, where D is the distance between K and M. So between here and here, this is D. A to A prime is just 2 times D, okay? So let's maybe consider... How could we find the length of G to G double prime? Okay, well, we know that 9 and 4 is the distance between K and M, because this is 9 and this is 4. They're going to be identical, right? So to find the length of G to G double prime, we're just going to take 2 times the distance, the distance being 9 plus 4. So that's 2 times 13 which is equal to 26, okay? So again, you're just looking in between the parallel lines. This is the distance, and you're doing two times that distance, okay? The last theorem we're gonna talk about, and then we'll discuss how can we find an answer for the last example, is theorem 4.3, reflections and intersecting lines theorem. If lines K and M intersect at point P, then a reflection in line K followed by a reflection in line M is the same as a rotation about point P. So that just means when you reflect over K and you reflect over um, M, we're just rotating about this point right here, okay? The angle of rotation would be 2X, where X is the measure of the acute or right angle formed by lines K and M. So it's almost like and between the lines K and M, that's the distance, and we're just trying to figure out the degree of rotation. You're just doubling it or timesing it by two. So we're going to try that here in this one. In the diagram, the figure is reflected in line K, then it's reflected in line M. Describe a single transformation that maps F to F double prime. Okay, so again, because I'm rotating it or around or I'm reflecting it around K and then another M, I'm essentially adding 70 degree rotation plus another 70 degree rotation here, or doing two times 70. So this is rotate 140 degrees about point B. Okay, that will conclude our notes today on 4.4, congruence and transformations. Thanks so much for tuning in. Give this video a thumbs up if it helped you at all and hope